Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Chad here with BetHub.com. Today we are breaking down the 2012 Major League Baseball playoffs, which are set to get underway Friday afternoon with the first installment of the two play-in wildcard games, which should be extremely intriguing. And that's where we're going to start here. I'll give you guys who I believe will win those two baseball games, along with the winners of each series in the division round, and then we'll revisit uh, those picks for the um, AL and NLCSs and then the World Series as well. And then in this video too, I'll also tell you who I get, who I believe will go the whole way and be crowned the World Series champions in about a month's time at the end of October. So let's get the ball rolling here in the National League because I believe this game is just a little bit harder to predict and I could make a strong case for both sides. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I will end up taking Atlanta here for a couple of reasons. First off, Chris Medlin has been simply unhittable since being inserted into the starting rotation. St. Louis hasn't had a lot of chances to see him in that role. They might be more familiar with him coming out of the pen as previous spot, but uh, I just think that he's going to be a dominating force on his home field. I'd be shocked if they get more than two or three runs against him. And then you look at Kyle Osha on the other hand, who's been good, don't get me wrong, but a little bit more inconsistent, doesn't have quite a nastiest stuff as Medlin does. And I think Atlanta will be able to find a way to chip away and score just one or two more runs to win this game. And then also you turn it over to that bullpen and they're going to be nothing short of phenomenal and lock it down. St. Louis's bullpen, I don't see being quite as strong. So even if the game is tied late with the home field in Atlanta, you really have to give them the edge there. And uh, that's where we go in the National League. And then we switch gears over to the American League, where without even a shadow of a doubt, I love the Texas Rangers in this game. And I think they're going to make a little bit of noise after that as well. And the reason why I like Texas here is, A, they have their home field, which is huge for a team that relies on the dimensions of that ballpark to maximize their offensive output. And then also is the fact that you're going to get a nice home crowd. And then third off, and the most important factor in this game is the starting pitching discrepancy. And I know that Joe Saunders has a better ERA, but I don't care. This guy is not a good pitcher at all. He's very mediocre. He does not have overpowering stuff and will eventually get exposed by this Texas Ranger offense, despite the fact they may have been struggling a little bit recently. He is uh, someone who's pitched in the American League West before when he was with the Angels a couple years ago. They're familiar with him and they will be able to use their power against him. Whereas you Darvish might be a little bit more up and down and inconsistent, uh, but you know what, this Baltimore team here, I don't think that uh, they have the experience of this Texas team to bear down a one game elimination and come through with the clutch hits at the end. They strike out a lot of risk taking team that I think you Darvish will get the best of them. And uh, that's why I believe Texas will win this game. And moving forward, I actually do like them when they will be playing the New York Yankees in the next round. And uh, the main reason for that is because of the fact that I think they have a little bit more depth in their starting rotation. Big deal. They don't have a U, U Darvish going in their first game in the next round if that's the way it breaks down. They don't have a legit ace. They can throw out Harrison. They can throw out Ryan Dempster. They can throw out Holland. If they even need to go to a guy like Gando or someone like Feldman coming out of the pen for long relief. They have so many options of starting pitchers, whereas New York, they're just so reliant on CC, who does well throughout most of his career uh, against bottom-feeding, not-so-good offenses. But we've seen in the playoffs in the past, he does struggle against good inning teams, which is exactly what Texas is. I just do not trust the likes of a Nova and a Phil Hughes with the way they've been performing up and down all season. Pettit, you don't know what you're getting coming off the DL. And I think Texas has a better overall bullpen. And I'm still convinced they have the better overall offense. Teixeira isn't fully healthy right now. A-Rod's clearly not what he wants, what used to be. It's just pretty much in the heart of that lineup. Jeter, Granderson, and Cano. And they don't have that vaunted bottom part of their lineup does the Yankees where you could really put some fear in other teams like they used to. So I'll take Texas in four games in the second round because of the fact, too, that they start in their home field. So if they win tomorrow against Baltimore, they stay there. New York has to travel across uh, to Texas, and I believe they'd win their home games and find a way to win a game in New York. The other series here in the American League is uh, the Detroit Tigers taking on the Oakland Athletics. You know what, I like the, both these teams quite a bit. I think whoever wins this series will go on and win the pennant in the American League. And I will be taking the Detroit Tigers here, and I think they're going to win the whole World Series. And that's because of the fact that they, I believe, are the most balanced team here. 
You look at that starting rotation, it's better than anybody's in the American League. Verlander, Cy Young candidate, nasty stuff, outstanding. Max Scherzer, he got off to a rough start this year. He's been just as good as Verlander for the last few months. Two great power pitchers to lead things off in that rotation. And then they roll out Doug Fister in the three spot. This guy's pinpoint accuracy. He might not have the power, but a nice contrast to those guys at the top of the rotation. He'll be better than most teams' number three starter. And then you look at also a guy like Annabelle Sanchez, who's got some good stuff at the four, and Rick Porcello can maybe hold it down uh, if they go with the five-man rotation or put him in the bullpen. I just don't think that Oakland's pitching will be able to match that. They have a lot of young arms that have some upside with Parker, Malone, uh, and um, who knows what's going on with Brett Anderson if he's pitching. We know the depth they have. I just don't think they have the mainstay, the power pitchers at the front of the rotation. And then also, how can you overlook this Detroit offense? It is nothing short of phenomenal. We've seen what Cabrera's done here with the Triple Crown. Prince Fielder is obviously uh, an outstanding number four hitter. Oakland, yes, Jonas Cespedes has been good, but they really do have a lot of guys that are, you know, obviously exceeding expectations here based on previous performance and projections. Much like the money ball Oakland teams we've seen in the past, they get to the playoffs, but they don't do anything when they're there because they eventually hit a wall due to the overall lack of talent they have. Give me the Detroit Tigers in four games. They'll be taking on Texas in a rematch of the ALCS from last year. We bounce back to the National League because I'm not quite as confident. I think it's a little bit more open there with all these teams. And um, I will actually take Atlanta to beat Washington here after when they beat um, when they beat uh, St. Louis tomorrow's game because I think that uh, not starting Str Strasburg here is going to have a huge negative detriment on this team. It changes the entire complexion of that rotation. Gio Gonzalez is good, but he's not an outstanding kind of pitcher where I want to be my ace. Edwin Jackson is up and down. Ross Detwiller is a rookie. You don't really know what to get out of his arm. He really doesn't go much more than five innings pitched. And I just think Atlanta's a little bit more uh, veteran savvy. I think that um, some of their starters, like a Hudson and a Tommy Hansen, who's been there before in the playoffs, these guys are going to bear down. I think, uh, is Jar Jurgens even in the rotation? Probably not. He's been terrible. Can't remember the other starters on Atlanta right now, but we know they have the best bullpen in the major leagues, so that's a huge advantage there. Washington does have slightly better bats, but I do believe that the momentum will be uh, taken into advantage here by both these wild card teams tomorrow that win and upsetting in the first round. And then when you look at the other series, uh, I'm a little sick with San Francisco because, hey, at the beginning of the year, I said they'd be in the World Series. As a matter of fact, I said Washington and San Francisco would meet in the National League Championship if you go back on the... Um, videos that I did then, which is not bad considering they weren't really favorite teams. And I will stick with San Francisco here because I do believe that their starting rotation is just a little bit better than Cincinnati. Yes, Suedo has been good this year, but I just don't trust other guys like the Homer Baileys, Bronson Arroyo, and we've seen how heady sometimes uh, the fellow they picked up from San Diego, Matt Latos has been for them. And I just find that this uh, giant team, I like Matt Cain at the front end of the rotation. He's better than Suedo in the first game on their home field. Baumgartner's better than their number two. And if Lincecum can pitch like he has been the last few months as their number three or four starter, that's fantastic. Vogel's long and Zito take your pick. They're going to probably be rolling out a four-man uh, rotation. And I just feel that this team finds ways to get these hits. They're not necessarily the most talented. I think that they draw a lot back from what they did winning the World Series a few years ago. And uh, I just believe that Cincinnati, a lot of their wins came against that terrible division. They were in a little bit of an inflated record. So give me the Giants to win a tough five-game series in Cincinnati to take on the Atlanta Braves in the National League Championship Series. So those are my picks there, guys, for the first round of the playoffs. To recap, we have Texas and Atlanta winning their wild card games, and then both of them going on to upset in the divisional round. We have Detroit and San Francisco also advancing. You know what, guys? If you guys have an opinion on this, then you might as well put it to good use and wager on it at bethub.com. As you can tell on the link below of this video here, click on it. It will lead you towards the site. We're running some pretty sweet promotions with bonuses. Get out there, bet your friends, bet whoever, throw out some bets, and make these exciting baseball games have a little bit of action on it at bethub.com. We'll see you guys around with some more videos upcoming throughout the playoffs.